Hi, and welcome to our next video dealing with algebra and ratios. In this video, we're going to start with a ratio, let's say, of boys to girls. And we know that the ratio from boys to girls in this class or in whatever we're looking at is, let's say, 4 to 7. So in this type of a ratio problem, they'll tell you that, and they'll say, well, let's say we take away, right, or it could be adding, We'll take away, let's say, 20 boys. What they'll tell you is that the ratio then changes to 1 to 3. So now the question is, originally, right, how many boys and girls were there in this class? So, you know, what were the numbers where there were 4 to 7, you took 20 boys away, and then actually changed to 1 to 3? So how do we do this? Well, I think this is a kind of problem where algebra comes very handy because we can write two ratios and then solve this whole thing. The first ratio I might, I might, might write is probably the one you're thinking is too obvious to even take note of, but this is quite useful. So the ratio of boys to girls, right, as a fraction, right, equals 4 to 7. Now, if I, have, if I use cross multiplication here, right, and solve here in a sense, or simplify, I multiply 7 by b and 4 by g, and I would get 4 times the amount of girls equals 7 times the amount of boys. Now, I'm going to leave that here for a moment, and I'm going to move on, right, and look at this next chunk of information, because I'm getting somewhere, even though it might not feel that way. This is saying, well, you know, you have some amount of boys, right? And then you take 20 of them away. That, over the, the number of girls, which is remaining unchanged, was going to equal 1 over 3. So this is our second ratio. Now, here I'm going to use cross multiplication to rewrite this statement. And I'm going to end up multiplying 3 times b minus 20. I'll write that like this for now. Equals a, or sorry, can't be my own handwriting, g times 1, or just g, right, the number of girls. Here in this part, I'm going to distribute the 3 to the b and then minus 20, and I get 3b minus 60, right, because 3 times 20 here is 60, and we're subtracting, and that equals the number of girls. So what do we do? Because in both cases, we have two variables. Well, when you have two variables and two equations, there should be a way to relate them to solve the two. So I'm going to have both of these equations read something where it's like the number of boys and girls on one side of the equal sign, over here maybe, and then equal some number over there. How am I going to do that? Well, in this first one, right, one thing I could do is just subtract seven boys from both sides. Now, what would that actually equal? Well, seven boys minus seven boys is just zero. And over here, I can't really simplify, right? It's just 4 times the number of girls minus 7 boys. And that equals 0. Now, this might not seem useful, but as you get better with algebra, you'll realize that this is incredibly useful. We've got both variables on one side, and they equal a number, even if that number is 0. Over here, with this equation, I can do a similar thing by subtracting g from both sides, right? and adding 60 to both sides. Do those two steps in one move. These are 0, this is 0, so we have 60 left over here, and, well, 3b minus g. I'm going to write it so it's minus g plus 3b, same thing, just different order, because I want to match this order right here. Now if I put these two equations next to each other, let's do that over here, we have 4g right, minus 7b equals 0, and this equation, you can see how the g's and the b's line up. So the thing is, how do we actually work with this? What do we do? One great technique here is to rewrite or multiply the top equation by some number so that when you add these two, they cancel out. And what I see right away is that there's a positive 4g here and a negative g here. So if I multiply the whole top equation right, this whole thing, by 4, and then add them, these will cancel out. 
because negative g will become negative 4g, and 3b will become 12b, and 60 will become 240. All I'm doing is redistributing, multiplying everything by the same number. I'm going to rewrite that over here. So instead of negative g, I get negative 4g. Instead of 3b, I get 12b. Right? Instead of 60, I get 240. On the bottom here, I leave it alone, right? I have 4g minus 7b equals 0. So now what? Well, the idea is that you know these two equations, just like any number or anything else, can be added. So I'm going to add these two. What does that mean? Well, the g's here are the like terms. One's negative, one's positive. They're opposites. And that's, you know, that's the whole goal of this whole setup, is to get rid of one of the variables. And we did it. Because now we only have one variable left. 12b minus 7b, or 12b plus negative 7b, is just 5b. And that equals 240 plus 0, or 240. Divide both sides by 5, right? We want to solve for b. And in this case, what does b equal? Well, what's 240 divided by 5? Well, I think that's 45, right? Excuse me, 48. Because, I was just thinking of that, sorry, um, 5 times 20 is 100. There's 200s here, so that's 40, right? And there's 40 left over, so it's 48. So what does this mean? All this math right here, right here. B equals 48. Well, B, remember, represents the number of boys. So originally, right, there must have been 48 boys in this class. So now, our goal is to figure out, well, how many boys and girls were there originally? Well, we were almost done, right? If 48 is the number of boys, that the number of girls, some number of girls, was going to equal 4 to 7, right? And you, you can solve this in a number of ways by cross multiplying. But here I'm just going to take a look at the scale here. From 48 down to 4, to the original. How many times does 4 go into 48? Well, that's 12, right? So this ratio is just 12 times bigger than this one, in a sense, because we scaled up both parts by 12. So to figure out what g is, I can ask myself, what is 7 times 12? Well, that's just, that's just 84. Right? So originally, the ratio of boys to girls was 84, oh, sorry, 48 to 84. Well, that's kind of fun. They were reverse digits. And that equals our ratio of 4 to 7. And you could test that out, right? 7 times 12 is 84, and 4 times the same thing is also 48, right? And if you were cross-multiplying, you would have done 7 times 48 equals 4 times g, and that would have gotten you, well, 7 times 48 is, 7 times 50 is, 350, so 7 times 48 has to be 14 less, right? Because there's there's 2 less in 48 than, than 50, so it's not going to be 350, it's going to be um, 336. 336, well, divided by 4, that's what this cross multiplication would have done. 336 divided by 4, that should be, well, 84. And it is, because 4 times 80 is 320, right? 4 times 4 is 16, so it does equal 336. But all this together, I mean, you've got this original number of each group, but you might feel, you know, especially as you're working or learning this algebra, this is like, there's a lot to process. So you want to think, you know, if I actually plug this into what we have in the beginning, does this work? If you take 20 boys away from this group, does that equal a ratio of 1 to 3? Well, it should, and I hope it does, right? Because that tells us the algebra is right. So instead of 48, we're subtracting 20. And then we get 28. So we have a ratio now of 28 to 84. Is this a ratio of 1 to 3? Well, you can tell if 28 times 3 actually equals 84. Does it? Well, 3 times 2 is 60. Right, 3 times 20 is 60, and 3 times 8 is 24, so that equals 84. So we solved the problem, and that was a lot to process. But let's just think about what we did, just to kind of backtrack, and maybe I'll delete this. Again, we were told originally that the ratio was 4 to 7, right? And that's boys to girls. So we said that, that that's our first useful piece of information. Boys to girls is, has a ratio of 4 to 7. And then we knew once you take 20 boys away, right? You have a new ratio of 1 to 3. 
So we tried to set that up and think about what that meant. Boys, whatever they were, minus 20 of them, and over the number of girls, which is remaining the same, this new ratio is 1 to 3. And in both cases, we tried to solve for our variables. Up here, we just cross multiplied. We got 7b equals 4g, right? Then we subtracted, I think, what did we subtract? I think we subtracted 4g from both of them. And that gave us, well, negative 4g. Excuse me. Did we do that? Or maybe we did minus 7. Yeah, we did. So we did, sorry, 4g. Because you can go either way here. I'm trying to remember what we did. Minus 7b equals 0. But don't stress out. You could have done it the other way and subtract um, 4g from both sides. All right, that would have given you 7b minus 4g is 0. These are two different equations based on the same right relationship but don't be overwhelmed when you're solving this you can go either way and it, it won't steal you wrong here we cross multiplied and we got 3b minus 60 equals g right equals g and then we kind of moved our our equation around we added 60 subtracted g and we got 3b minus g equals 60 and then what we kind of did was and I'll pick any of these, right? We paired up the equations in a way that helped us cancel stuff out. Right, these two, the B's line up, the G's line up, it's, it's all ready to go and all ready to cancel out. But this equation down here, if I, the, I, the, I, I happen to look at the girls, right? The, the G and the negative 4G here, but you could have easily focused on the groups of boys here by scaling these numbers up. Um, but what I did again was to multiply this whole thing by negative 4 or by 4 depending on which equation I chose. Um, right? If I had chosen this one, I think I actually chose this one originally, then I would have scaled it up by 4, but just to, that would have canceled out in a different way. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So if I multiply this whole one by negative 4, then I would get something like negative 12b right, plus 4g equals negative 240. And I'm pairing that up with this one right here because if you line them up, you could see that these variables here are opposites. And that's exactly what I want to happen. Or if I had paired up with this one, I'll show you. It doesn't really matter. In that case, I would have multiplied this by positive 4. And just, just to make things cancel out, right? Because if I, if I multiply this whole thing by positive 4, I get 12b, right? Minus 4g equals 240. And now I'm pairing it up with this one over here, and you can just see, switch the order around, sorry, negative 7b plus 4g equals 0. And again, the goal is to cancel out variables that we don't need, and in both cases we have that. These cancel out, and so do these. So when we divide both sides by 5 here, we get b equals 48. And in fact, the same thing will happen here. Negative 12b and 7b is 5, negative 5b, but that equals negative 240. Divide by negative 5 this time on both sides and b equals 48. So both times you got 48. And then the next step in, in the problem was to plug that in for me into this original ratio right here. So 48, right, is the number of boys over g equals 4 to 7. Then you, then you just solve for g. You can cross multiply. You can look that 4 into 48 is 12. So 7 times 12 equals the number of girls, right? 7 times 12 is 84, and that's the total number. And then towards the end, we just checked. We plugged those numbers in, took 20 boys away from the group to see that, that actually give us a ratio of 1 to 3. And, and this is really a lot of algebra, but I think you'll really enjoy these kind of problems once you get the hang of them. You'll see just how powerful algebra really can be to sort out a problem that really is intuitively confusing. I mean, there are other ways to solve this, but I think this algebraic way allows us to deal with all kinds of variables. Thanks a lot.